Hello, this is Brad Garrett, Assistant Executive Director of the Oregon School Activities Association and current chair of the NFHS Football Rules Committee. The following video is intended for use by game officials, coaches, and players to help define and establish expectations related to newly adopted rules and definitions regarding targeting and the defenseless player. The video is broken into four sections. Section 1, 15-yard targeting fouls. Section 2, Flagrant Targeting Fouls, Section 3, Defenseless Players, and Section 4, Legal Blocks and Tackles. Each section contains numerous clips to help all parties better understand the committee's expectations. Narration during the clips has been kept to a minimum to facilitate discussion. Let's begin Section 1 with the definition of targeting. Targeting is an act of taking aim and initiating contact to an opponent above the shoulders with the helmet, forearm, hand, fist, elbow, or shoulders. Key targeting indicators include leading with the helmet, forearm, fist, hand, or elbow to attack with contact at the head or neck area of an opponent, and lowering the head before attacking and initiating contact with the crown of the helmet at the head or neck area. Targeting is an illegal personal contact foul that carries a 15-yard penalty. Any foul that is deemed flagrant will also result in a disqualification of the offending player. Each of the offending players in the following clips should be penalized 15 yards. Play 1 shows a defender attacking a quarterback high, makes obvious contact to the chin of the offensive player. This is a targeting foul. Play 2 shows a defensive player contacting a quarterback. The player has the opportunity to make a legal tackle, but makes the decision to strike the quarterback high under the chin. Play 3 illustrates an offensive player that's in the grasp of a defensive player. A second defensive player comes into the picture and strikes the offensive player in the head and neck area. Play 4 shows a defensive player cleaning up a tackle, but making first contact with a forearm to the head and neck area. Play 5 is another example of a defensive lineman that makes the decision to strike the quarterback above the shoulders. The end zone view is a great view of this foul. Play 6 is a great example of initiating contact at the head or neck area. Play 7 is another one of those plays where a defender is wrapped up and the second defender is coming in to finish the tackle. In this case, the defender drives the offensive player's helmet into the ground with his shoulder. Targeting can also be called on offensive players. In this clip, you see a running back use his head as a weapon. There is absolutely no attempt to avoid the defending player. This could be a flagrant foul as well. Section 
Section 2 clips illustrate flagrant targeting fouls. Flagrant targeting fouls carry a 15-yard penalty and disqualification of the offending player. NFHS rules define flagrant acts as any foul so severe or extreme that it places an opponent in danger of serious injury. Flagrant targeting indicators are as follows. Launching. A player leaving his feet to attack an opponent by an upward and forward thrust of the body to make contact at the head or neck area. And a crouch followed by an upward and forward thrust to attack with contact at the head or neck area even though one or both feet remain on the ground. The offending player in the following seven clips should be disqualified from the game. Play 8 illustrates a dangerous play where the defender launches and initiates first contact with the head or neck area of a pass receiver. In play 9 you have a receiver on a delay route. The defensive player makes no attempt to make a legal tackle and initiates contact above the shoulders with his helmet. Play 10 is a classic targeting situation. This type of play needs to be eliminated from high school football. Play 11 is a classic launch situation. The video shows a real good look at the definition of launching. This player makes first contact with the head or neck area of the receiver. This player needs to be disqualified. This defensive player makes first contact with the chin of the offensive player. Play 13 gives you a great look at a slow motion view of a flagrant targeting foul. Targeting fouls occur in the kicking game as well. Take a look at the peelback block by the offensive player. Section 3 shows clips involving fouls on defenseless players. These fouls are illegal personal contact fouls and carry a 15-yard penalty unless deemed flagrant. A defenseless player is defined as a player who because of his physical position and focus of concentration is especially vulnerable to injury. Game officials must diligently observe all action and watch for contact against players who are deemed defenseless and must draw a distinction between contact necessary to make a legal block or tackle and that which targets those players. Examples of players deemed defenseless are provided in the NFHS football casebook in the 9.4.3 comments section. Play 15 shows a blindside block by an offensive player. This could certainly be deemed a targeting foul.
The defensive player in this clip is defenseless. His focus and concentration are on the receiver, and the offensive player initiates contact high. Play 17 shows an incomplete pass situation where the offensive player is contacted above the shoulders. Play 18 demonstrates a situation in which a runner is being tackled to the ground and a defensive player makes initial contact above the shoulders. Play 19 is an incomplete pass situation. The defender makes legal contact, but it's late on a defenseless player. This is unnecessary roughness. Perhaps the toughest call involves situations like play 20, where a player's focus and attention are clearly not on the opponent, yet legal contact occurs almost simultaneous with the ball arriving. These are very dangerous situations and officials should scrutinize the nature of the contact with the defenseless player's safety in mind. Another tough situation are those involving kick returners or punt returners who muff the ball and whose sole focus is on retrieving the ball. Section 4 illustrate legal blocks and tackles. Play 21 illustrates a legal peelback block on a punt return. Play 22 is a great example of a defensive player who is playing the football. Play 23 shows a legal tackle. The player does leave his feet, but initial contact is in the midsection with his head on the ball. Play 24 shows a defender initiating a legal tackle and avoiding contact to the head and neck area by moving his head to the side. In this play, a defensive back uses proper tackling technique to bring a receiver to the ground. Here is an example of almost perfect tackling technique by the defensive player. This play involves contact at the sideline. The defensive player, while he does crouch and lunge, initial contact is below the shoulders.
minimizing risk for all participants is the number one priority. And given that, when in doubt as to whether or not a targeting foul has occurred, game officials will be instructed to call targeting. When in doubt as to whether or not a flagrant targeting foul has been committed, game officials will be instructed to classify the foul as flagrant and disqualify the offending player. Thank <music> you.